Netflix is set to report after the bell today. Join us now with what to expect. Tom Rogers, Orbit uh, Gaming and Entertainment Executive Chairman, uh, former NBC cable president and a CNBC contributor. Uh, Tom, this, this, uh, this company and, and how we judge it is, is kind of changing right before our eyes, I guess. And uh, there could be a little bit of a, of a slowdown in, in subs, but that's not going to be what we're supposed to look at anymore starting next year. They're not even going to release uh, that info. We're, we're supposed to watch it how the advertising model is progressing. H how do you think it's going to play out tonight? Well, I think you uh, hit it right, Joe. How we judge this company is very much changing. Uh, for a while, we were judging it against the legacy media company streamers, the Hulus, the Disney Plus, the Max, the Peacocks. Um, and uh, clearly, it has broken away from the pack on just about every metric with respect to those services. But the next big growth leg for Netflix is presumably going to be advertising. And that puts it against some very different competitors that are miles ahead of it. Uh, uh, mostly uh, YouTube, uh, which has surpassed Netflix in terms of the most watched uh, service on connected TVs. Uh, in terms of streaming content, and uh, Amazon, uh, which uh, not only has the Amazon Prime streaming service, but is aggregating all the other services, uh, for the most part, with the exception of Netflix and other channels, and really providing a platform through which everything in the streaming world can be watched. And with YouTube, you're talking about, with Google, the number one advertising company in the world, with Amazon, the number three advertising company in the world, miles ahead ahead of Netflix when it comes to uh, data and targeting. And from that perspective, Netflix is really in a very nascent position with uh, probably no more than 15 million subscribers in the U.S. that actually have their ad service compared to YouTube, which probably has a couple billion eyeballs across all of its uh, ways of, uh, of watching that service. It's a couple of billion eyeballs, one billion people, Tom. Uh, Joe, you've uh, got me on that one again, yes. No, I just mean if it's a couple of billion <laughs> eyeballs, it's, I think it's only a billion people. Tom, um, when you look at, at football and sports and Netflix's move into that space a little bit, at least when you're thinking about some of these this holiday games and the like, how much of that is going to drive new subs? How much do you think that's just strictly an advertising play? Can they make the advertising component of that profitable just on its own? Uh, is it about preventing churn? When this experiment is uh, looked at a year from now, is it going to be seen as a wild success? And how would you measure it? A lot of questions in there. Yeah, I, I, clearly it's part of an advertising strategy because uh, sports and viewership live is uh, premium advertising dollars and you can aggregate audiences for advertisers in a way that on-demand programming doesn't uh, serve the same advertising needs. Uh, and some of it, like the Christmas Day NFL stuff, is very high profile. And I'm sure when it comes to uh, certain sports enthusiasts, it will have subscriber acquisition elements to it as well. What I look at in the sports realm that I think is really going to uh, create another possible surge in subscribers for Netflix is something Disney is going to do. And in an odd way, it, uh, Disney may be handing more subscribers to Netflix. And that's when ESPN flagship, the core ESPN service next year, goes into a full streaming service. And you no longer need the cable bundle for purposes of accessing uh, uh, the last part of the sports world, which really hasn't gone to streaming yet. And I think that's going to have some real consequences on uh, further uh, cord cutting, uh, probably taken an awful lot of the diehards of the uh, cable package who have held on to it for sports and uh, feeling as if they're freed from it. And when that happens, Netflix should be another, uh, should be the biggest beneficiary of all that when those uh, subs are thrown up in the air. Well, if, if this is, I don't know if this is a, uh, a, a turning point in, in what Netflix does, Tom, but. I how do they boost margins now? Is it going to be from raising prices on the not ad-supported service, or is it going to be being able to, to get more subscribers for, for uh, 
I don't know, for the six ninety nine. Can they raise prices there? What what does it if you were them, how would you because they don't make any money with the advertiser right now, do they? They don't even break it out and it's not much. Can they raise the price of, of just the ad free service right now if they're not gonna add as many subscribers? Well, they, they they do regularly raise the price, and uh, price, of course, is a function of what kind of engagement you're getting, and that's where Netflix wants us to focus. Uh, what is their engagement? Uh, the first half of this year, the engagement story is a, a little odd because over the course of the last 12 months, they added about 39 million subscribers, but their engagement was only up 1%. Uh, now, that sounds like you're uh, actually stepping back in terms of the amount of engagement per subscriber you're getting. In actuality, because it was password sharing crackdown, uh, you yeah. uh, those you had those that viewership already and then just monetized them by by cracking down on password sharing. Um, but uh, to your point on uh, on margins, uh, I think they they not only will raise price on the non advertising tier as they uh, always have, uh, but in doing so, it drives more people to the ad tier. Uh, and their ad today is actually the cheapest ad tier in all of streaming at six ninety nine a month. And they want to drive more viewership to the ad tier because that really is a nascent part of the business. It's better fact, engagement there, too, right, Tom? Or, it, it, or they get longer or, or better on that? But they're not nearly as many do that, right? They're just starting out. Right. They, they, they have a long, long way to go there. They're mm -hmm. in... They're in 12 countries, but they, uh, and in those 12 countries, it looks like uh, about 45% from what they last said of new subscribers are coming into the ad tier. Uh, but okay. to really be a player there, uh, they have a long way to go. La last uh, quarter, both uh, Hulu and Peacock, for instance, were driving more ad revenue to their streaming services than Netflix was. Okay. So it gets a disproportionate amount of attention from investors relative to what they're really doing today. But that's their next leg of growth for sure.